All right, we are here with Annie, the little two-year-old wildie. She's got uh, about a year now here under her belt, working together with her on groundwork and walking around and all that kind of stuff. If you're new here and unfamiliar, a wildy is like a Canadian Mustang. And so essentially she's come from the wild and is coming along so well that today I thought I would try to see how she would do with a saddle. Not for riding purposes, she's a little young yet, but um, let's see how she does with a little bit of what could be to her trouble. So the first thing I want to do is I want to brush her. And brushing, can be pretty beneficial for your relationship because you're kind of you're doing something that is hopefully something that they like now annie's had her fair share of groomings and brushings so she knows what i've got in my hand it's not a concern to her um, in fact if anything she will move around quite happily to have different parts of her brushed What I'll do is I'll turn her around a little. Okay. Like that. And uh, I don't think we've got ourselves in any different of a position. I want to kind of turn her sideways. There. Okay. That's what I meant by turning her around. So we'll just get a little bit of a brushing's going on knock off the sand. Kind of like we would do, it's sort of the procedure that we would kind of go about doing if we're saddling any horse. You know, we're gonna come along and we're gonna try to see if we've got all this sand up. I'm gonna back her up. She wants to turn, so I'm just going to fix the position a little better. And back. And then over. There. So we're back. So what I want is to not have to micromanage her with the rope. So this is all just going to be one step after another. When I think about saddling, I don't just think about the saddling process. I'm thinking about how would I be doing this normally. I understand she's going to want some areas scratched more than others. I'm okay with that. But I'll listen for that and then I'll do it when I'm ready. So she's shedding a little bit, as you can see. It's not a lot to be honest, but the brush fills up kind of quick. Like that, put it there. Keep going a little bit. And the reason why we're trying to get any sand and gravel off is we, if we were actually going to ride, we wouldn't want the saddle pad sort of grinding that sand or gravel or whatever's in her mud, dirt, into her skin. So I really want to pay attention to that. We'll get underneath her belly too, where the cinch is going to go. As you can see, she's quite good with grooming. She always has been quite calm about it. When she first came, she had all kinds of, I'm way too tight on the lead here. Um, she had all kinds of lice and ticks. And so those needed removing and she was quite appreciative of that when I did it. Move your bum please, all the way around. And we'll come on the other side. So, I'll just leave that down on the ground. And so when I was grooming her when she first got here, I had to, I really had to be able to touch her whole body. And when I was touching her whole body, um, she could feel those ticks being not the finest process. Uh, but she could feel them kind of getting removed and coming off and then they're not itchy or I guess maybe painful anymore. And, uh, and in turn, she became much more amicable to the idea that she's going to be brushed 
and love done. I mean, ideally, I don't really want to hold on to the lead rope all the time. I don't want to have to micromanage, of course. They should just be pretty cool with standing around. Uh, which she is. Quite often. Mm -hmm. Very, very few times do I need to do anything to have her stay and hang out for a solid grooming. She is a big fan, which is a huge bonus. We really want that in our horses. We want them to want us to touch them and take care of them, especially because one day they will get hurt. Horses are like that. They tend to get hurt doing something and then you've got to fix it a little. Here, it's all you. Uh, and so we got to be able to touch them in all kinds of places, whether it's uh, under the belly or on the legs or at the top of the head or the ears or the eyes. All of these things are pretty important. And this is the very basics. Obviously, I'm just, oh, I'm just sort of messing with the top layer of care in a way. Hey, this is a big one. Yeah. Good. So that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with with that. I'll usually go over with my hand and just see. She's she's shedding a decent amount. If I really start to pull at it, um, I don't necessarily want to start pulling at all of it. So I'm going to quit that while I'm ahead. The brush a bit of a cleans. Okay, so next step um, for this, I'm gonna pick up the lead again just so we have a better view. Let's back up. Good. And he's a pretty good backer upper, she doesn't have too much problem with that, which is nice. And I'm gonna to try to stay pretty loose on the lead rope. And we're gonna start just with a blanket that she's had on her many times. I'm gonna approach her in a way that might seem um, I don't know, aggressive is not the word, but might be a little bit quick. So she might feel a little worried. So we're gonna take that back out of her. I think it goes in her. There's her ears and say, you're a good girl. Come here. Yeah, you're a big girl. And this is where our grooming came in handy because we started by grooming. And so now to bring her back to ease, I'll groom. Not a lot, I'll just do a little bit. Just give her a little scratch on either side. Now, a lot of horses will stand for things if they're standing, so we're gonna take a walk, right? Let's see how this goes. Oh, come on. Pretty uneventful. I don't feel any concern on the end of the leaf, so I think I'm not going to bother going any further. So, uh, next up, we're going to try for the saddle. She's giving it a sniff. It's going to smell like other horses. So I'm going to ask her to step off of that. Let's take off the blanket. Just to be sure. Put it back on. Uh, without controlling her much, she's going to come around. And we'll check this side. Now, I wouldn't do this if she wasn't well trained, I guess we could say, in, in having the lead rope on the ground. She's not ground tied. I'm not, a, I'm not all, I'm all about ground tying, but I do want my horses to know how to move about if the lead rope is on the ground. So we've worked with that a lot. She knows where that rope is and she knows what it means when she steps on it. So. Uh, 
I would say she's about, I'd say she's about 80% good. Could work on that 20% for sure. I'd like to see her be less concerned, less flinchy when I go to chuck this thing up. Now, if you're new here, um, I never really blanket my horses. There's no need for it to do that here. It's not that cold. They don't get that cold. And so she hasn't had a lot of training or practice with blankets on her, other than this one or some other saddle pad or something that I've done a little bit with. So it's not like she has daily practice with a saddle, or not a saddle, but uh, with, a, with a winter blanket on or a, a rain sheet or something. Good. So it's pretty good. I'm actually kind of happy with that. I'm going to put that off to the side. So the next thing is a saddle pad. We'll put that up there. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but we'll take a walk anyways. Come on in. Good, I don't see any, nothing that really sort of strikes me as her being concerned. It'll be a little rougher here. Sort of take it on and off in a bit more of a careless fashion. I'm scratching her on her chest for a reason, and the reason isn't necessarily for comfort, but I'm actually adding another stimulus to the mix. So I do this, and then chuck that up top. It essentially, have the feet essentially allows for more than one contact point or more than two contact points so me putting the saddle pad up and over and stuff like that is one or two contact points most likely and if I'm going ahead and touching her she's also got the halter on this leaning on the crown if I can do this and this you know if I touch here here there's a two that's a third contact point you know if I come all the way around and I do this and I do this and then I bring my leg up she'll start to get kind of worried because it's a lot of contact points so if I do this and this, you know, so there's a little bit of worry there, but we're going on a little bit of the theory as well that her and I have a pretty good connection. And in turn, that's going to help us here. Okay, so next up is saddle. I'm gonna bring the stirrup up. Oh, come here. Um, okay, so for this one, I'm going to, I'm just going to put the rope over my arm like this. I'd like for her, if she were to get worried, I'd like for her not to just completely take off. So at the very least, we can stay a little bit connected like this. I'll probably be able to catch it. I've got enough rope here that if she were to go somewhere, I could probably get it. If I can't, it's no big deal. Um, it's fine. It'll, <laughs> it's not going to go anywhere. So, but we'll see. So she's got her saddle pad on. Now we're going to chuck the saddle up. Let her finish sniffing it. What do you think? I've got the stirrup up this way, so it's not going to flop down over back on her back. And we'll give this a go. Sort of place that up there. 
And he's looking in the distance right now. <laughs> I don't think she's overly worried. Which is good. All right. Let's take it all off. And do it again. Good girl. Yes, so very good girl. Okay, so she's flinchy which I don't want her to be afraid. So uh, what we can do next, a little noisy. next is have the cinch come down and flop against her side. So I'll show you how I might think about that. So it's jingle jangly. Um, and there's nothing wrong with showing your horse how jingle jangly it is. Like, it's okay. It's just jingle jangle. That's all right. No oh, airplanes today. I think she's doing okay. used to is being pet uh, around her face. We're going to give this a go. <clears throat> okay, so at the very least saddle is on enough that it shouldn't roll. It's not tight tight. It's not going to roll. Okay. I can already feel myself sort of building up a little bit of tension inside of myself. So I'm gonna shake that off. And I'm just going to give her a pet. I've got a plan in my head and I'm thinking it through like, oh, I'm gonna do this and then this is gonna happen. And what if she does this? We've all kind of seen or some of us have experienced horses freaking out when they've got a saddle on and you tighten up a cinch kind of thing and you've got, you know, the stirrups coming down and <laughs> What I don't want to really happen is have that stirrup come flopping down without me controlling it. Now, overall, I think Annie's doing pretty good. Hey. So let's just have at it. Okay, loose, a little bit loose for the lead. I'm just going to bring this up another notch. And then we've got a second strap to put in. I'm just taking my time. This is not a rush process because the first one's already kind of on. 
And um, the saddle's not going to roll. What we're worried about is the horse gets worried and freaks out, and then the saddle kind of flops around, falls down underneath, all that kind of stuff. Well, what do you think? You look good. <laughs> okay, so let's lead her a little. I should give actually a tip here. clearly super confident or overly confident because I just dragged a barrel up with Annie with her brand new saddle on the back. But what I was going to say is if you're really worried about your horse sort of freaking out and sometimes when they're afraid they snug up to us and they come real close. But you could put a barrel in between and then I could just send her. I could say Annie go over there would you please. And I could use the barrel as a way to protect myself if she were to kind of lose her mind a little. Come on, come There's a little movement. So that would be a technique you could use if you're kind of new or you're especially worried or you don't move so fast and you know horses do move fast. So, so far so good. the ball earlier with her to see how she'd do. So here's an exercise you might do when you're riding, is your figure eights. Well, we'll do that on the ground. And we don't let them cheat. Kind of get on both sides of their body quite a bit. Going through. Cool. And we can also practice switching sides with our leads. As in the lead rope. So now the lead rope to my left hand. And when you get kind of good at it, just send them through, turn them, go the other way, go around.
Go around. get to for your figure eights and groundwork. That's pretty good. I think that I could probably say that that is a huge success. I feel like I've had her in a saddle before, but I don't think we've done any full out work or anything. And I'd sell, I'd call that a finished session. You get a lot of questions on how long to work with a horse and stuff like that. I think I could go further, but I have, <laughs> we have, we have some very good success there. I'm quite happy with that. No freak outs, no bothers, a little bit of flinching, a little bit of worries. Now we got to get it off. So do everything in reverse. A horse can get pretty worried when that happens. So we'll just check that out, see how she is. Come around. We take this and sometimes you put it up on the saddle and it worries because it's going to jingle jangle on the other side. If it jingle jangles on the other side and she gets worried about that side, there's a chance she'll come towards me. So we'll just place it up there. She's resistant to me switching sides. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna avoid thinking about it much. She's gonna avoid thinking that I've got her face in my hands. I might even provide just a little bit of trouble here. Because she's done so well. Okay, take everything off. I'll let that stirrup slide across as well and call it a day. Now, that's just for the saddle stuff. I will end off. I do try to end off on a bit of brushings, something that we started with, because I'll be doing it anyways if I ride. Always want to brush out our horses. Saddle area, cinch area. I'm really gonna come in here and give her a hug. See what she thinks. Let's get the cinch area. Maybe the breast collar area. And I would call that a fantastic success for little Annie here, who is almost two years old. I'm quite happy with that. We'll be continuing this over the next little while to get it to where it's just totally solid. And uh, head out on the trails, go for more walks with her, her body all geared up. So that's it for this one. Any thoughts or questions, let me know below as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.